Hey everyone, and welcome to our instructional video on SG, Stability Factor or Stability Gradient. You may hear me call it either one of those throughout this video, but just know that that's what I'm talking about whenever I would talk about SG. So the SG, which is found here in your profile, let me go ahead and back out and show you something here real quick. Um, when you're building a new profile, you'll notice that you have your SG information here as you build it. And I'll show you how you can actually utilize that to your advantage in the future. You're also SG is indicated by this coloring on the BC number here. So as you can see, this BC numbering is red, indicating that there's something going on with my stability factor. And indeed there is, it's 1.33. If that stability factor was above 1.5, which is ideal, if I tap here, and you can see that we are above 1.5 here, and you'll see that that number is white. Same as here. And then if I go down here, you can see the CDM here is red. And that indicates that we are indeed below 1.5, which we are at 1.46. So that's an indicator that, hey, maybe I want to look at my stability factor and see what's going on there and determine why it's red. Now, we're going to edit this profile and go over it in a little bit more detail. I can do that by hitting the three dots here and clicking edit or by just simply tapping on the pencil icon. I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see that I have my stability factor here. Now, stability factor is influenced by three things. Your bullet length, your twist rate, and your atmospheric information. Now, in your profile, it's set to sea level standard atmospherics, but in the HUD, there's actually a live stability factor, which we'll go over here in a little bit, and I'll show you how that one works. So, stability factor is influenced by bullet length, twist rate, and atmospherics. So if I was to change this bullet length to 0.4 inches, you'll now see that my stability factor is 2.42. And if I change this back to 0.5 inches, you'll see it's now 1.32. Another thing that, that adjusts your stability factor is the current twist rate of your barrel. So if I switch this to an eight twist, I'm at 1.66, and if I switch this to a 12 twist, you can see I'm now at 0.74, all right? So let's go ahead and let's reset this back to where it should be. This is a nine twist barrel on this particular rifle, and go over a little bit more information. So we can't adjust the atmospherics here to see how this would play out in colder or warmer climates, but we'll do that on the HUD. But there is this little information icon. Now this profile is currently operating in a BC. So when you have a profile that's using a BC and not a CDM, it will tell you what your current BC is, 0.125. What your adjusted BC is, in this case, 0.118, says my BC is being compromised by 6% and that I really need a one in 8.25 twist barrel to use this bullet in this current profile. Here we have a chart that shows you that if your SG is less than 1.0, you're just unstable. You're very likely to just have tumbling and other problems. Here we're in marginal stability. The closer we get to 1.0, the more likely we are to have issues, whether that's degradation in performance, like you can see here, a 6% reduction in performance, or just outright tumbling and issues. Maybe the, you'll have transonic zone issues, whatever it may be. Ideally, you wanna be above a 1.5 SG. And you can see here, it says, stability factors of 1.5 or greater ensure adequate stability. So this is where we want to be. Now, we'll close this out. And I want to show you if you had a CDM, how that would look as well. So let's go ahead and go down to our CDM. We can see that we have a stability factor uh, issue that needs to be at least looked at going on here. It's 1.46. And if I hit this, it says we're compromised by 1%. Every 0.1 below 1.5 is equal to roughly 3%. So if this had been an SG of 1.3, it would be 6%, 1.2 is a 9% degradation, so on and so forth. And it gives us a minimum twist recommendation. So you can use that in a couple of ways. I'm going to demonstrate one way here first and then another. So let's say that I have this AR-10. And I'm currently shooting the 185 Juggernaut. I'm going to scroll down here and you can see my SG is fine. But let's say I want to change to the 220X. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to here. 
220x. All right, now let's see what happens. Can I shoot that? Oof, 1.22. What's going on here? I really need a one in 10 twist rifle. So I have two options. Rebarrel this to one in 10 or pick a different bullet. So let's say I can't shoot the 200. Can I shoot something else though? Not that. Can I shoot the 190? So I wanna switch bullets from the 185 Juggernaut. Maybe I can shoot this heavier 190. And it says I can. So my twist rate is fine for that bullet under normal sea level conditions and generally where I live. So yes, we could do that. And that's one way to utilize that tool. Now we're gonna discard this and I'm gonna show you another way to utilize that tool. So let's say that I have a rifle and I'm building this new test rifle and I wanna know what kind of barrel should I have. So I want to start shooting ELR. So I'm gonna to go to the 375 options and let's say that I want to try to shoot the new Burger 407 solid. I wanna build a rifle around this bullet, okay? Now my estimated velocity here is gonna be, let's say 2,900. And this really isn't super important for this, but it does matter. We wanna get everything right. Now, I'm building this rifle and I see this says SG of 1.3. Oh, okay, so I need to remember that SG is based on bullet length, twist rate, and atmospherics. So I'm doing this test and I want to know what barrel should I buy for this rifle. Well, a 1 in 10 is not going to cut it, right? So what I can do is I can click this little button here. I should have a 1 in 9.25. Okay, so if I ran a 1 in 9 twist barrel, our SG would be fine. Now we're gonna save this as our test profile here. So there we go, we have this test profile now saved. All right, and I wanna show you the live SG tool. So I'm gonna to go to the shoot menu here. I'm gonna pop this open and you can see, oh, we're not on the right profile. So there's a mistake that you could make. Let's bring that profile into play. So don't make the mistake I just made, but it's good to see that and to learn from it. So there we are. So now let's open this up and let's see. So today I would have an SG of 1.75. Now let's say that it was winter time and we're gonna make this unrealistically cold for where I live. And I wanna know how this thing's gonna perform in the winter here. So I hit done. 1.47, that's fairly acceptable. Uh, that's well within a margin of error. So you can see that we have a live SG number here in our HUD, and we can use that information to see how would it perform in the winter. We currently have fairly summer-like conditions. How would it perform in the summer? So 1.76 SG, so this would work. And this is how you can use that SG tool. So if I go to another profile here, for instance, um, that 17 HMR, let's take a peek in here one more time so I can show you, uh, is 1.33. Let's find one that's borderline. So here's another rifle. This one's 1.46, so that's borderline. So let's bring that up into play. It's now the active rifle. Now watch what happens under today's conditions. Under today's weather conditions, our stability factor is actually okay. It wouldn't have any negative effects. So you do have a live stability factor here on this page, and you do have some ways that you can play around with that. So I'm gonna go back here now one more time. I'm gonna go down to that test rifle that you saw a moment ago. Hit the edit button here, and we'll go over this one more time. So stability factor, this number here, is related to our bullet length and our twist rate. So if I had a weird bullet length that didn't make sense into here, so let's say I had a one inch bullet for a 375, that's 407 grains, that's not realistic, but look at this number. It's way out in left field, right? And the same would go, we'll discard these changes, if I was shooting a 17 HMR, okay? So if I go to the 17 HMR, and let's say that my SG, I'm gonna change this number uh, to a one, 1.1 inch bullet, that's a really long bullet for a 17 HMR. 
and I go, well, that's weird. My SG is 0.18. Why is my SG so low? Then I would backtrack and go, okay, my twist rate's okay. Ah, my bullet length, that's not right. So that's something that you can do. And then lastly, again, you have this indicator here. Now, with this indicator here, if I was to go into here and I was to take a peek and I go, ooh, my SG is 1.33, why? Oh, it says here that my adjusted BC is 0 0.119. Well, if I go up here and look, we don't change your ballistic coefficient. We don't do that, but you could. If you were to do that, however, if I was to go zero, 0 0.119, done. If I was to do that, the next thing that I would want to do is put already adjusted B, C. I'd want to put that note here in my notes to let me know that I've already adjusted my BC because if I open this back up, it now has the new BC I've input and a further adjusted BC and I don't want to adjust that down even more. And that's one of the reasons why we don't adjust your BC for you automatically. But the other one is we really don't want to mess with these numbers if we don't have to. So that's one way that you can actually account for this. Now, another thing is if you had a CDM, like this one, I really can't adjust this BC because it's a CDM. We're not gonna adjust this number. So what I would do in this case is I would do a CDF calibration. So we bring this profile up into play. We go here and we bring this up, bring up our ballistic calibration. Ideally, everything's well. We have a good muzzle velocity from a, a radar chronograph and we're gonna do a CDF calibration. If you don't have the CDF calibration tool, your next step would be to do a DSF calibration. And if you don't have the DSF tool, your last option would be to do a muzzle velocity calibration. This is of course the last and the final choice, and it really is better to do a CDF calibration in this instance if you have that capability. So that's your, bring it back up here so you can see it one more time. That's your stability factor. By the way, I could have if I wanted to, just tapped on the profile name up here in the corner and that'll bring the profile up as well. But that's your stability factor. And that's kind of how you can utilize it inside the AB Quantum app, how it works and really some neat features that are, are surrounded by it. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please comment down below so we can get those made. Please like and subscribe to these videos. It really helps us disseminate this information out to other users. Thank you and have a good day.